you struggling to make your first 100K or next? Are you pretending you're successful, but barely getting by? Are you tired of comparing yourself to millionaires and billionaires who make it look so easy? Welcome to First 100K, the number one entrepreneur voice in America. I talk about the important things that no one else is talking about, like how to make your first $100,000, because I believe this is where 90% of entrepreneurs get stuck. And I tackle the mental game of entrepreneurship that we all secretly struggle with but won't admit. My guests are successful entrepreneurs who share their mistakes, their number one fears, their daily habits, and their superpowers that push them over the 100K mark. I'm your host, your coach, your friend, Joseph Warren. I'm also a 10-time failed entrepreneur and the owner of two co-working spaces here in Tampa, Florida. This show was created for you, the entrepreneur who's pushing to break through the elusive 100K milestone. Wherever you are in your business, you're just 100K away. Today, my featured guest is Kayvon Kay. He's a master of sales and closing. He's an expert keynote speaker, a creator of the One Call Closer methodology. We're going to get into what he means by that. Can you really close a sale, especially a high ticket item in one phone call? I want to know, don't you? Kayvon is a titan of the industry. From being Canada's number one pharmaceutical sales representative to creating a multi-million dollar coaching program, Kayvon has a vast range of skills centered within the art of sales. His ambition, drive, and confidence has led to his domination of the industry and his world-renowned abilities. But Startup Nation, he's a regular guy just like you and I. He knows what it's like to struggle. He knows what it's like to be at the bottom and, and be so close to getting it, but just don't know why it's not working. So if you're there, listen up. He's got stuff to share with you today. You can find him at kayvon.com. That's K-A-Y-V-O-N.com. Kayvon K, welcome to uh, your first 100K. Go ahead and fill in some of the gaps in that intro, would you? <laughs> Joseph, thank you. It's a pleasure being here. And I'm uberly excited to be here because I know what the struggle is. I have struggled more than I've succeeded in my life. My entire life was a constant struggle. In fact, for the first 30 years of my life, I was, it was a constant struggle because I was trying to fit into everyone else's box. From grade one, when they written me off with ADD, ADHD, LD, I mean, every letter in the book you can think about, to grade nine, where they said I wouldn't graduate high school, all the way to university, where they told me to quit in my first week at university to go and get a factory job right next to my father. Mm. I know about the struggle. I know what it is to be the underdog. And I know what it is to fight the demons up in your head, knowing that you have something great. You, you know that you're different than everybody else. And you know that it's a powerful thing. It doesn't need to be your fortress. I needed to learn how to turn that into my fuel. Uh, so... By the time I was 30, I was, as you mentioned, I was working with the pharmaceutical sales company. I was number one in the country and I was doing all right. I was making about 300K a year, you know, company credit card, right? Working one, literally, when I say this, working one day a week, uh, driving the car, you know, everything was swipe, swipe, swipe. And I was empty. I was miserable. I just, I wasn't fulfilling my legacy. I wasn't even fulfilling what I knew I was capable of. I was just doing what society told me I wasn't capable of doing and what my parents, oh dear, my parents, right? Try, wanted me to do, get a corporate job. But most people thought I was crazy. I was miserable inside. And, uh, and it wasn't until that moment I realized and, and we're talking about entrepreneurs being at struggle. The reason why most entrepreneurs don't make it or the most reason why entrepreneurs don't even get to that next level. And I'm not even talking to the first 100K, I'm talking like the first 50K is because they're so attached to the person they've been, not the person that they got to become. They're so, and I, and I say this, as I said, at one point in my life, and we could talk about it a little later, is I have every entrepreneur hits that rock bottom. I truly believe there comes a moment in the entrepreneur journey where enough is enough. The whole, all those sayings, right? We didn't come this far to come this far. And for me, when I hit my wreck, but my uh, rock bottom, I realized that I had to go after my dreams at the risk of everyone else's disapproval. 
So at the risk of my family's disapproval, my best friends, my community, everywhere I was hanging out, I had to leave them so I can be completely selfish for the first five years of my new journey so then I can live the rest of my life being completely generous. Mm. All right, so you hit on a lot of points there and I agree with almost all of them. And I really get the letting go of uh, that attachment of who you were, where yeah. you came from. And many of us came from just dysfunctional families and yeah. you know, parents that did the best they could with what they had, they're good people, but man, they, they just put in some toxic uh, mindset poison in us of disbelief in our own abilities and talents and giftings and a vision for ourself and our future. So how did you transform or transfer from who you were, where you came from to who you are going to become? Mm -hmm. That's a great question. And, and I would lie if I said I did it alone. Right. I had a lot of, I, I did a lot of help, you know, I, you know, self proclaim I did a lot of therapy uh, mindset therapy to get over what you just said is you're right. Like our parents, they, they did. I always say this about my parents, right? They were immigrant parents to the Canada for the first time ever. My mom was 18 years old. She didn't know a speak of English. My dad, you know, got her, you know, had her first, uh, or my, my oldest sister, 18. She's in a different country without her family, no education. My dad left school at grade two. He came from a very, very abusive, just a bad energy of a, of a, of a lineage. And they came here to start something new. They, they did the best they could with the resources they had. And, but through that, there was a lot of tri childhood trauma. And it wasn't just from my parents. It was, the school system was probably the worst of it all. I mean, being told at the age of what, grade six, that you were like not good, <laughs> you were going to end up in jail. And you were told that all the way to about 21. By the time I was 21, I started to believe that stuff, right? It's hard to, it's hard to fight that off after that many years. And uh, so through, through a little bit of therapy, through soul searching, through a lot of self-development, I should say, right? Like going to, the, going to the events, going to the courses, picking up those books, that, the non-traditional books, the self-development books. I started questioning myself. I started asking the questions. I started looking into the past and seeing what was holding me from the past from making me be able to move forward. But most importantly which a lot of people don't recognize is what was happening in my current situation that was triggering the past that was keeping me restricted, that was holding me in submission, that was keeping me anchored and not allowing me to be free, not allowing me to realize the reason I'm feeling a certain way is because this event that I'm going through today is a trigger from something I went in my past, my childhood, that has no reflection of where I'm going. Can you give us an example? to make it yes. real for us. Yeah, I love it. No, absolutely. So I spent my entire life being in survival mode and my back against the wall. So when you're in survival mode, the opposite of that is what? Fighting, right? I was in fight mode. So survival deep down in my heart, on the outside, I was fight, I was aggressive. And uh, anytime I feel triggered, so anytime someone makes me feel less than, not important, someone takes away something, whether it's emotionally, spiritually, physically, uh, someone says no to me, or maybe I get fired from a job, or for instance, I'm going through it right now. We're getting evicted out of our, I've been here for six years, and we're getting evicted out of my apartment because the, long story short, owners want to move back in. And for me, when that happened five years ago, that was the most devastating experience of my life. Like that was someone's ripping my home. How dare you take my home? This time around, the first thought was triggered. Like I was going to go to that dark place. I was going to get into that place where like I did nothing comes good from it. But instantaneously I realized, no, this is, this is just a moment in life. And when one door shuts down, another one opens literally two weeks later, we're going to be moving into our dream home on the water, looking over the beautiful, I mean, incredible. And I wouldn't have been able to get there without that work, without that transformation. No way. I would have been still sitting. If you would have talked to me today, five years ago, in the current situation I'm in right now, I would be coming from a place of fear, place of survival. I would have arrogance. I would have been, you would have been able to feel the wall up. You know, most people would have been like, that guy's an arsehole, right? Sorry, language, right? You know, an a-hole. Now, and you said it earlier, 
and I don't like to be this guy because I think as men, we're getting a little too soft, just my own opinion, but there is a lot of vulnerability in strength, like strength and vulnerability. And, and I think there's time for it. And right now is the time for it. I know there's people listening that are going through that struggle. I truly know that I've been there. I cannot tell you, I have been there and I can't wait to tell you my first six figure story because it, it, it talk about struggle. And, and I know that if all I could do is just help you and understand that, like, this is the struggle. So when you read in the books, they say, what are you willing to do in the next three to five years that most people won't in order to have and get a life that most people will never have. So this is what I'm talking about. This is the struggle. If you're sitting there and you're about to give up, if you're sitting there and you think it's over, you're sitting there and you're like, I have nothing left. You got to dig deeper than you've ever dug before. You got to stay in the game because at some point the clouds are going to open up. You're going to see the sunlight and everything's going to start to shine. Most people quit or give up before they even give it time. And I'm going to just use the word, the spirituality of it, whatever the energy of it for it, allow it for it to happen. You can't force it. You got to be in it good or bad. Mm. Powerful. Okay. Let's get into your first 100 K story. Your first six figure story. Tell us that go for it. So uh, as you know, my childhood was hard. I mean, I mean, it failed. If I came home with a D or a C, my parents were doing the happy dance. Okay. So by the time I'd actually graduated university, in my mind, I'm like, like most people's mind, hey, I'm going to get my first six-figure job. Now, in my era, back in, you know, I was born in 84, so early 90s, when you were making six figures, like 100, 150K, like that was a lot of money back then. Well, you know, 20 years later, I get out of school and I'm like excited. I'm like, I'm done with this. It was, I can't express to you what a struggle that was, okay? I go out and get my first career job. $30,000. I, you, I, I didn't even, even have a pot to piss in for $30,000. So what happened was I had a goal. I said, by the time I was 26, I wanted to make my first six. That was the goal. So I written that when I turned right. My birthday is November, the first year, the 25th year of my life. So January to the November of my birthday, I wanted to make my first six figures. So I went out and I got the $30,000 job. And come, I'll never forget this. Come January, I looked and there was like $2,000 in my bank account. And I'm like, this isn't going to work. There's no, I'm just doing the math. Doesn't add up. So I went out and I got five jobs. I worked five full-time jobs. I worked like a slave just to make that first six, just because I, it was, it was it, in my eyes, if I didn't do it, I was over for the rest of my life. So I did it. But here's the thing. It wasn't actually a positive thing. It was a, I, I know in that year, I pissed off more people, lost more jobs than I've ever lost in my life, uh, rubbed more people the wrong way. And I was miserable at the end. I was so exhausted and I was tired and I just knew something couldn't like, there's something that had to give. And that's when that first transformation came. That's when I had to actually look at, it wasn't about the output. It wasn't about the things I was doing. It was about the things I wasn't doing. It was, I wasn't working on the inside. So, so what'd you do on the inside that once you shifted it, your outside environment shifted or opened up for you? Let go of all those, all the past trauma, let go of all that anger, let go of all of that fear. And all of a sudden things started shifting and not even six months after that first year of six figures, I went from working five jobs to one corporate job making 150 grand and then 250, and then back to that 300. Why do you think it is that so many people miss this concept that when they invest in themselves and do the inner work, which is the difficult work of going yeah. on the inside, going into the dark places, into that cave and meeting themselves and their past and, and all the hurt and trauma, once they do that ugly, painful work short term, their entire future and life opens up for them. Why are they missing that? Why would they rather just stay out with their life looking like crap, going like crap, yeah. feeling like crap, than going in and doing the temporary painful work? I, I have many reasons to that, but one of them, and I alluded to before, is because, well, A, they're in such fear, and they like their story. They're attached to their story more than they're attached to their goals or dreams. So they're more in the victim, and I, and I hate to say it, like it is, I'm sorry, guys. If you're feeling like that, you're in victim mentality. 
It means you have a low level of consciousness. It's your, everything's to me. Oh, this happened to me. Oh, that happened to me. The moment you rise your consciousness and you get to that next level to at least by me, right? So everything comes by me or through me, you'll never get to that higher level. The other reason why is because if they go do that, they're afraid to actually open up the, the wounds. They're actually afraid mm -hmm. to see what's really there because it's, it, it's kind of like the matrix. Once you see it, you can never go back. And even though they might not know it, uh, like mentally, spiritually, the, subconsciously, they know that it's too dark for them. And they rather have that wall up, right? And look the part, dress the part, talk the part and get everyone's approval versus going to that dark side. And what you said was amazing. You said for a short period of time, you never said it takes years. You're right. It doesn't have to take a long time, but it takes the hard, consistent and dedication to get there. And once you go there, this is the problem your friends start going, what are you doing? Why are you reading that book? Why are you going to that place? You've changed. Your parents start questioning you and doubting you. Let me tell you something. My parents and my environment where I once was, was so strong. I knew by the time I was 30 that I couldn't go to the places I wanted to go unless I was willing to actually physically move. I had to move across the country and start over. And when I moved across that country, I had to unattach myself. I mean, I love my mother. I'm a mama's boy. I'm proud to say it. I love my mama. I had to call my mom and say, you're not allowed to call me. I will call you when I'm ready. Please don't call me. People go, why would you do that to your mother? Because I had to be incredibly selfish so that I can come back and be incredibly generous. I had to cut that off. Because I'll tell you why, and this is important in business. And I remember when my mom would do this and I would just hang up on her. She would call me and she would say, Kayvon, honey, I love you so much. I'm so worried about you. You had such a great life here. Why don't you just come back? I don't need to hear that. I'm already worried about myself. I'm $150,000 in debt. I don't know when my next bill is going to come back. And you're telling me you're worried about me? I need you to tell me, keep going and keep fighting or don't call me at all. I was willing to go through that transformation because I knew I needed it. I knew I had to. And now guess what? Yes, they didn't like me. Yes, they all pushed me away. Yes, they made it a struggle. Now they don't say anything except clap their hands. They sit in the back and they cheer me on. But are you willing to go through that pain? Are you willing to break that bridge for a short period of time so you can finally birth the person you want to become? Well, Startup Nation, there you have it. We're speaking with Kayvon K. He just asked you a very real, very raw question. Are you willing to what do are what you it willing takes? To do? Yeah, to get the life you say you want. Or are you what? just pretending? Let's be real. I love that. Are you willing or are you pretending? Let me ask you, are you willing to start saying the things you never thought you had to say? Are you willing to start doing the things you never thought you had to do? And let me ask you this nation. Are you willing to get on your knees and ask the questions to whoever it is you look up to? How can I be great? How can I be better? And you sit there long enough until you hear the answer. Are you willing? So many times we hit our knees when we hit rock bottom, but then we get up too quickly. We don't wait and listen. We yep. don't wait for the answer because it doesn't come as fast as we want it to come. So we, what do we do? Our little control freak, I call it, says, well, I'm going to go do something. Even if it's dumb, at least I'll do something. I got to control something because I feel out of control. And it's that very uh, act of taking back control when you were finally at the bottom, ready to release, ready to surrender. And you grab it back too soon, prematurely, and sabotage everything that God, universe, whatever you want to call it, was about to open up in your life. So, Kayvon, let's get into it. Uh, this is a business show after all. I do uh, openly speak spirituality into it because I think they go hand in hand. Yes. Uh, if you're winning, if you're killing it in business, but you're miserable on the inside, are you really no. successful? 
No. Well, no, you can't. You will never be successful in business if you're truly, truly miserable. And you, know, you might look like success, but it ain't real success. You are That's a right. direct reflection of the things that you get in your life. We know that. That's fact. That's science. It's truth. You are a direct reflection of the things that you're getting in your life. So if you take a look on the outside and you don't like what you see, you don't like where it's going, you got to take a look on the inside first and shift and change so that you can actually achieve the things you want on the outside. So for me, where it became real, when I had to make that first, I want to talk about first when I had to make that entrepreneurial jump. So within one week, I'd, I, had, I, was, I found out that like my corporate job was at risk. Commissions were changing. My life was about to change. The next day, the first eviction I was telling you about. The day after that, my mom called me in tears, telling me my dad was going through another round of chemo and radiation. The fourth day after that, I swear when I say this, most people don't even believe me. When my sister called me and I was like, yes, I heard about dad. It's okay. Don't cry. She's like, no, you just not it. I go, what next? Her husband left her a note and left her and the kids alone. By time the end of the week came, the person that I was infatuated with at that time, told me that she couldn't look at me the way I looked at her. I mean, I hit my rock bottom, but here was the thing this time. You remember when you said wait long enough? I waited four days physically, mentally, spiritually on the ground. I mean, I was on the ground waiting for someone to come through the door to save me, waiting. And after day four, I realized nobody was coming through that door. I told them not to. I told them to leave me alone. They finally listened. The time I needed them, they finally listened. But it was the hardest thing and it was the best thing. Because on day four, I looked at that door and I realized I needed to pick myself up. And that was when my first transformation in business changed. I left all corporate, jumped into entrepreneurship. Now, like most entrepreneurs, I thought, oh, two months, three months, I'm going to be a millionaire. Got it. I got it covered. Nine months later, I was $150,000 in debt. I went from earning $300,000 on a secure job to being 150 k in debt. The reason for that is because I was doing all the wrong things. I was watching what everyone else was doing and I was trying to copy them. I was trying to go down the affiliate marketing route. I was trying to go down the coaching route. I was trying to go down um, the Amazon route, uh, info. Pro I was doing all the things that they told me to do except the one thing I should be doing. And it wasn't until I had my first mentor at the time who said, Kayvon, you, you're not an internet, you're not a marketer. You're not an internet marketer. Stop doing that. You're a closer go close. Okay, what? What are you talking about close? I don't want to be a salesman. I hated being a salesman. I was done being a salesman. I was a salesman my entire life. I was finished with it. And he said, no, instead of trying to create the products, instead of spending money on Facebook ads, instead of trying to be the marketer, just go close for them. And they pay you a percentage. And I said, what? And then he said, oh, and by the way, they fill your calendar. Okay, what? You're telling me that I just have to pick up the phone. Someone's going to be there on the other line. And I just got to speak to them and close them into a product. Yeah, literally, literally from going from negative $25,000 a month, six weeks later, I was making 25 K a month to 50 K a month to 80 K a month to over six figures a month as a closer. Then we turned a skill that I was so good at into a product into a course to teach other people that. And we ended up going from zero to 10 million in eight months, 5,000 students in over a hundred different countries. And then guess what? What? It was all taken away from me. My Why? business partner screwed me. Like every story you hear, I mean, I went from making six figure month paychecks right back to the bottom again. And I guess what I had to do, same thing I did all my life. I had to first evaluate because that's huge. A lot of people don't do that. They don't actually sit back and evaluate what happened, what went wrong. How can I be better? What could I have done different? I first had to do that for three, four months to figure out where and what I was going to do. And I promised and I vowed to myself moving forward that nobody was going to control my income and my destiny or my fate again. That if I was going to build a business that I can stand on, that, was, that had a foundation so strong that it could withstand anything like the events we're going through right now, that I needed to be patient and I needed to build it smart. Not fast, but smart. And it took me a year. I was in a year. So I want people to understand this because this is what I say. Are you willing? 2017. I was $150,000 in, sorry, yeah, $150,000 in debt. 2018, 
I was a millionaire. 2019, I was $250,000 in debt again. And now 2020, we're back up to six, seven figures. That's a swing. That's an emotional swing, a financial swing, a spiritual swing. Most people can't handle that. That's why most people will never be great. You got to be able to handle that because business is not easy. Don't listen to what everyone's saying. I'm sorry. Business is not easy. There's a reason why a lot of business people fail, but it doesn't have to be hard. It doesn't have to be difficult. You just have to do the right things. See the right things, ask the right questions and be willing to be wrong. You see a lot of people have to be right all the time in that transformation. I was talking about, I was willing to be wrong. It's a difference. I was willing to grow. It wasn't always about me. It's my way. It was okay. That's a great way. Let me learn it. I might not like it. I might not want it. I might not need it, but I want to understand it because I want to understand more things than I've ever understood in my life. Because the more things I can understand, the more things I can see, the more powerful I become. Kayvon, let's get into what are your top three tips or strategies that you used to rebuild again and okay. that Startup Nation can use right now in their business to go yep. from wherever they are, 15K, 30K, 40K, 85K yep. to over 100K in 2020 during a pandemic. What are your three tactical and practical tip strategies? What do you got? There's, there's only really one big one. And this is the key here. See, most people try to build a business before they build a skill set. You can't just go and build a business because you have an idea and you think you're good at it. What you have to do is you got to first acquire a skill set a high paying skill set. They call it a high income skill. So for me, my high income skill was being able to close over the phone. That means a high income skill is something that you can, as a skill, you can earn $10,000 a month before you build a business. If you can't create a skill or develop a skill that earns you $10,000 a month, you shouldn't be building a business. So acquire the skill first. Then once you have acquired that skill, then what you do is you build a business around that skill at stage two. And then once you've built that striving business around that skill, then stage three is that's when you can start thinking about investing and going into real estate and all that stuff. See a lot of people want to go zero to 10. I see so many people, they don't even, again, I don't know if I'm allowed to say this, but they don't even have a pot to piss in, meaning they have no money, but yet they're saying, I'm a real estate investor. Oh, really? How's that going? Oh, I want to build my business. Oh, really? How's that going? You can't build on something you don't have. Just like life, you can't give what you don't have. You got to first create it. So if you don't have money coming in and if you don't have like money at all, how can you build a business? You wanted me to be real? You can't. You can't build a business on a beer budget. Now, can you go and get money to get people to invest into you? Sure. Can you get people to give you money? Can you get loans? Can you, you know, get credit cards, build a business? Sure. Yeah. But what I'm saying is if you don't have access to cash, money, how are you going to build anything? You can't. So you got to acquire that skill first so then you can get the cash or at least get a little bit of a start so then you can start building the business around that skill. That's, that was the key differentiator for me from when I was going 150K to making 50K a month was I went back to my roots. I went back to my skill set. I'm not a copywriter. I'm not a marketer. I don't do Facebook ads. I'm not an operations guy. I'm not an Amazon guy. I don't write books. I don't write. I talk. I speak. I flap my gums. That's how I make money. I stay in my lane. And then I get everyone around me that I suck at to support the areas I suck at. The best move I made in 2020 was partnering with one of my best friends who's the complete opposite of me. He's an operations analytical data-driven guy. He takes care of all of that side of the business. I take care of the one thing I'm great at. My business tripled by bringing him on. Okay. Got it. You know, <laughs> it's rare that in an interview, and I've been criticized that sometimes I speak too much as the interviewer, and this interview is uh, definitely not that case, right? You can hold your own and hold the stage. And I think it's fantastic. And you're adding value. Otherwise, I'd be cutting you off. So really good job. Um, thank you for those three tips. Acquire a high income skill, build a business around that skill, invest into passive, passive income streams afterwards. Um, when it comes, here's the one pushback, and then we're going to wrap up the show here. Yes. On the acquire a high income skill, one of my listeners right now somewhere on planet earth is saying, I don't have a high income skill. Yeah. What do you say to them? I say, okay, that's okay. 
That's a story that you're telling yourself. I don't have any high income skill. Like I don't have the resources. I don't have this. I, I'm not good enough. Those are stories. What's, what's reality. Reality is, is sure. You haven't acquired the knowledge or the information or the con Oh my God. Was it the competency mm -hmm. to be able to build the confidence to build a high income skill? So if you don't know what your high, high income skill is, if you don't even know what a high income skill is, if you haven't, you're like, I don't even know where to start. Then this is where, this is the greatest part you are in your life is you're in what I call is test mode in trial mode. You get to go test and try things out, things that you love, things that you hate. You can't go keep doing the things you think you're good at. You got to go start doing the things you don't even know about. And one of those things is going to connect for you. If you do it, if you try hard enough, long enough, one of them's going to connect and you'll know it'll connect. Hey, just don't like, don't ask me, what are the signs? You just know, just like we know that our, we have a, you know, higher spirit. You just know this is the right path for me. That's the one you go down in. That's when you stop doing everything else and you go all in on one and you go down that. And I promise you this, you work your butt off for 365 days and that one high income skill, your life will change. But that, that means 365 days. That means every single day being consistent, every single day showing up, every single day. On the days you don't want to come, you show up. I got to leave it off here, and I know we got to go, but there's one thing I really want to say because it, it just came to me. On those days that you don't want to come, that you don't want to show up, are those days that you have the biggest breakthroughs, are those days that you grow the most. Here's what I'm going to say. Leadership and character isn't built when you're winning the game and when you're at the top of the game. Leadership and true character is built when you've lost, when you're at your rock bottom, when you have nowhere to go, when you're lost, you have no idea what you're going to do next. That is true character and leadership. You find yourself in those moments when you get to the top, everything becomes easier. So I'm, I'm seeing you're a closer. I get that. I also think you're an inspirational speaker and you can really impact a lot of millennial types who love that high energy uh, type of speaking. Um, would that be another high income uh, yeah. skill for your future? Absolutely. I've always dreamed of it. Always wanted to do it. Um, just waiting for that moment in life in time, right? It That's will so come cool. when it finds itself. There you go. Love it. All right. We're speaking with Kayvon K. You can find him at Kayvon.com. That's Kayvon.com. Kayvon, welcome to my favorite part of the show. Welcome to the hustle round. I'm going to ask you 10 quick fire questions. You'll have about three seconds to answer each. Don't overthink it. It's just for fun. Are you ready, sir? Yeah. Well, no, I'm not ready, but I'm Good. ready now. <laughs> Perfect. Awesome. What's your favorite thing about being an entrepreneur? Freedom. Least favorite thing? The stress. The right, overwhelm. Let's Let's get real, right? We're all human. We're all struggling with something at any given moment of our life. The what uncertainty. Are you struggling with? Oh, oh, we're struggling with? Yeah, what this are you thing. struggling with on pro uh, professionally or personally right at this moment if you're belief just being system. real? Belief, confidence, the belief system that I can integrate. What are you most afraid of? <sighs> Failing. What did you spend way too much time doing your first year in this business? Facing the wrong dream. Yeah. Chasing the wrong things. What secret fear do you have about people? Uh, that I won't be good enough for them. Yeah. What do you wish you had learned sooner in business? The high income skill. <laughs> What's the new habit you want to form? Uh, more openness. Acceptance. What's, What's a bad habit you want to break? My anger. Pick three words to describe who you are now. Uh, three words. I was going to say brilliant, but that's kind of cocky. Um, I, I would say inspirational, uh, determined and, uh, and definitely uh, stubborn and pick three words to describe who you were your first year in business. <laughs> Lost, confused, dramatic. <laughs> and last question, Kayvon, if you could come back to life after you died, look your family and friends in the eye, give them only one piece of advice about Thing. what would you say to them authentically and truly love yourself any final wisdom what's the one thing you want my listener to know about making their first 100k this year you will realize 
I hate to say it, you'll realize that your first 100 when you make it isn't anything. It's so small and you're going to get there and say, what was I working so hard for? Realize it's only $8,333.33 every month you got to acquire to get that first 100K. That's your goal. That's it. It's not 100K. Your goal is $8,333.33 in the next 30 days. Can you do it? I love that you broke it down to that very doable, measurable, specific number. Most of us don't have those clear, specific monetary goals, and that's why we're chasing the horizon, in my opinion. All right, what's the best way for Startup Nation to get in touch with you if they so choose? If they go kayvon.com, K-A-Y-V-O-N.com, and if you definitely want to learn the high income skill that got me to where I am, you want me to help you with it, you want me to acquire, you want to acquire that. I am teaching that. I do have my students. We do have opportunities. We have people, again, making five figures, six figures a month, the same thing I'm doing. Just go to kvon.com and you'll get all the social and you'll find me if it's the right fit for you. Do not come here because you're excited. Come only to me because you know this is the right thing for you. Preach. All right, Kvon, thanks for being on your first 100K. I wish you God's love, peace, and joy in your life, my friend. Startup Nation, you cannot show up authentically in your business without building faith in your business. If you want to have that conversation on the faith side of things, go check out my other podcast called Broken Catholic. On that show, I interview all different guests about why the world isn't working right now. Plus, I tackle unspeakable topics that you may secretly struggle with, but won't admit. We got to get your faith right to get your business right. Go to BrokenCatholic.com. I'm Joseph Warren, and you were made for greatness. So stop being a wuss and start being a winner. Have a blessed day, and I'll see you right back here next week.